everybody, it's Charles. In this video, we're gonna be putting together a beginner's toolbox and do it for under 2,500 bucks. This is a follow-up video to one I did last year building an apprentice roll cart for $1,500. I went through the thousands of comments that you guys left on that video to put together this setup. And while this is not all the tools that any mechanic or DIYer will need in their entire life, it's a pretty good start. And I'll fill you in on exactly why I'm doing this again in a little bit. Starting off with the toolbox, it's a Husky toolbox that's 46 inches wide by 24.5 inches deep and coming in at $480. I chose this box for two reasons. One, I really like the 24.5 inch depth box over some of the shallower boxes or ones that were more expensive. Also, I own this exact box. I've had it for years and it's really, really good for the price point. I also love that there's this pegboard piece you can buy to hook onto it and give yourself a nice backing to the toolbox. I prefer a deeper toolbox. So there's some other boxes in the market that would work really well for a lot of people, but they're only 18 inches deep. This one's 24 and a half. Yeah, it's not 30 inches deep, which is what I really prefer. But remember, not everybody has the space for that much depth. So a little toolbox buying advice, buy the deepest box you can find for the price you can afford and the space you have. So we have a lot of tools to put in this box. Let's get going. I'm going to talk in depth about some, not so much others. Adjustable wrenches are pretty self-explanatory. While we're putting all this stuff in here, this is not going to be the box's final organization because this is not my toolbox, so it's not my place to say how to properly organize it. Quick note on the adjustable stuff. Sometimes I don't like apprentices to have this kind of stuff, especially these, because they tend to grab this stuff instead of the right tool. You got to do what you got to do, but from a professional standpoint, if you have the right tool, that should be your first grab. If you're building this as a DIYer or, you know, kind of a backyard, work with your buddies kind of thing, it's not as big of a deal. But for the professionals, these have their place. Make sure you're using them in the right one. Let's go ahead and make this kind of the pliers drawer here. So I'm going to stack some stuff up. A lot of this stuff came on the back of what you guys recommended I should have put in that last apprentice box. And so we're adding some different stuff. Some of this is stuff that over the last year, I feel like be has become pretty important too. This, this is a tool I wish I had at the very beginning of my career. It, it is, it is, it is stuck in here. Struggle pliers, come off of there. These are exhaust hanger pliers. I've used these a ton in videos. Super, super helpful. Of course, you need a pair of side cutters. Now, I've actually struggled a lot more this year than I did last year. And I think that's for a number of reasons. One, a lot of stuff is more expensive than it was last year. Needle nose pliers, very important part of your toolbox. A lot of stuff is more expensive than it was last year. I think we can all relate to that. Two, with the one I built last year was specific for a VW technician, beginner technician. So it was a little easier for me to decide what specialty tools a rookie VW person is going to need. This is gonna be a little bit more universal. So it was actually really challenging. It took me way more time than the first one did. Hose clamp pliers, these are the kind that I like, kind that grab those springy squeezy clampies. That's my favorite kind. Also coming from you guys, a pair of wire strippers. Early in my career, I actually hated these automatic ones. I've grown to like these a lot. It's the style that I now mostly use. These will automatically size and strip wires. They lock in place, which is nice. I think that's that drawer. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, let's throw some hammers in the drawer. These came from Harbor Freight, super affordable. I've used a similar style to this one my entire career. Same thing with the dead blow. I really tried this time to make the tools different than last time. Sometimes though, I think I've found really the best overall thing, so I just went with that. Uh, something that was missing last time that I decided to add was a cutoff wheel, as well as an air grinder. We don't have budget for electric, so I think air grinder is the way to go. Also, there's a couple of these things that I bought that I actually think you might do better not buying what I bought. I'll mention those as we go, but I got a lot of feedback from the guys that got the boxes that I built. Some more air tools, a blowgun. This was one that was on the list from y'all. Definitely a must have. I've probably lost more of these than anything in, in my whole career. Also tire pressure gauge, another must have. I actually have never used this exact one. It took me a lot of years to find one that I really, really, really like. And I, and I ended up spending snap on money for one, but I started out with something similar to this. Oftentimes rookies aren't doing a ton of like gravy suspension work. At least they shouldn't be anyway, in my opinion. But this is another one of those tools that I wish I had very early in my career. I have one now, the same exact one that I have here. I use it often, even in places where I think I could probably get away with not using it. I tend to use it and that is this ball joint press. So you slide this tool in as you tighten this bolt down, squeezes the ball joint and it pops out sometime in 
very dramatic fashion. I think since we're working in air tools in this drawer, we can go ahead and put our impact gun. This is a place where if you are smart, unlike me, if you're smart and build your collection over time, you could save, I think, 60 bucks on this air gun. I think I paid 169 for it when I bought it this year. I paid 100 bucks last year for it, so it was quite a bit cheaper. 60 bucks is a lot, and it's super solid impact gun. This is another place, too, where electric would be really cool. I just don't think as you're starting out, it's worth the extra money right away. I think for the price delta, which is well over $100 pneumatic, Pneumatic's the way to go. Let's just go ahead and get these magnetic trays out too since they're sitting right here, nice and easy. They don't require a drawer. We can just doink them to the side. Another nice thing about this toolbox is there's an outlet on the side. I really like the side outlet. The front outlet, like my main box has, great, except it always gets cords caught in the top drawer or blocks the top drawer with cords. Also, you can never have enough of these things. I mean, I guess you could. You know, it's so funny. I put these together and I'm thinking, man, this is so many tools. And as I'm loading this box up, it's like, there's gonna be a lot of room left in this box. I think last time I did this exact same pick set, super good value for the picks. A lot of the stuff I chose to has a lifetime warranty. You know, as much as it would be awesome to walk on the Snap-on truck, spend all the money, right? Just, just buy all your tools from Snap-on or Matco or Mac or any, any other tool truck brand. That's kind of dumb for a new technician. You're new. You don't need so much quality in your tools as you need quantity. You need a lot of stuff. If you're like me, you started out with a 250 piece craftsman set and that was everything you had. And that's enough. It's enough to get going and then you buy your box and build your kit out as, as you go. And hopefully you're working at a good shop that the shop foreman will help you put together or what, you know, a, a group of the kind of the experienced guys will help you put together a good kit. And that's where I think we often do fail our, our rookie technicians. We let them jump on the Snap-on truck, let them spend $3,000, which is super easy to do. And the worst part slash best part in some ways is you pay 50 bucks a week, but you end up paying that indefinitely. This is not a great way to store screwdrivers, my friends. There are much better ways, but that's how we're gonna do it right now. What we can do though in that same screwdriver drawer is put this Trim tool kit, this is a pretty, I have it upside down. This is a pretty legit kit of trim tools. I've actually found that I've lost more of these than I care to, especially when I don't buy them. When I get them for free, I lose them a lot, but it has trim clip popping pliers, the trim clip popper tool there, the little like pry bar tool, and a bunch of different things, and radio keys. Oh shoot, I didn't even notice this. These are wire pin tools. I didn't even know that when I got it. So bonus. Next up, we got some fun stuff. Some of my favorite stuff, Milwaukee Impact and Drill Kit, 200 bucks. I still think this is one of the best values for this kind of thing. I came this close though, not to getting these. And what I actually almost got was a similar set with a bigger battery from Rigid. Two reasons for the Rigid. One, it was cheaper. 140 bucks versus 200 bucks for this one. Two, Rigid power tools have a lifetime warranty and that is incredibly huge. So, um, you know, you have to be mindful and smart when you're putting this stuff together. And I'm gonna tell you why I went with Milwaukee. One, I'm a Milwaukee fan. I have tons and tons and tons of Milwaukee tools. Two, I did it to try and give a little bit of advantage down the road. So once you get on a battery platform, you have the batteries, you can easily buy just bare tools instead of buying like the whole other kit with batteries. And then you have like 75 of these kind of chargers that you don't ever use or anything like that. So I tried to get them on a platform that had a wide breadth of tools that they're likely to want or need in their career, which is why I went with this drill, this impact. These are also the two that I use most often. Two other things to go along with those impact is a set of bits. Now you're probably looking at this brand going, oh, that's not the best out there, Charles. Those are really, really cheap. I know, but what I didn't want to have is no bits, no bits at all. Cause no bits is a bad amount of bits. This is another place where like, do you really need to spend snap on money? I pick on Snap-on a lot. That's probably my favorite truck brand, which is why I always say it, because it's the first one that comes to mind. But you don't need to spend that kind of money on bits. There's plenty of other stuff. And this, this will get you to a place where you can evaluate what you're doing and decide, do I need these 
or do those need to go in the garbage and I need to get something else? Rather than spending $500 on a bit set and you use three of them, also to go along with those impacts, these adapters, this will allow you to use a socket on the impact, which is pretty much my bread and butter. Here is one where I think is actually not a smart buy, but I got it anyway. This one came off the feedback of the four guys that have gotten those roll carts that we put together last year. And this is the tool that I think most of them went out and bought first, this Milwaukee electric ratchet. Now, I love this electric ratchet. I own a couple of these electric ratchets. I use these electric ratchets, but I think for the almost 200 bucks, I think 200 bucks this one costs, this is a fuel. You save a little bit of money by not buying the fuel, but it's not much. I think for the 200 bucks, you're better off buying a $20 air powered ratchet and saving your money if money is that tight. If you have some budget, this is a great addition to your toolkit. Again, I I use mine all the time. I prefer quarter inch to three eighths, but I didn't have the quarter inch, so I got the three eighths. You already have the battery for it, so you can get bare tool. It's a great tool. I just think if you are super budget conscious and you have access to unlimited shop air, then the pneumatic one's probably a smarter buy at first. If you're a DIYer at home and you don't have a big air compressor or even a smaller one, kind of like that one I have over there, running an air powered ratchet off of that thing double stinks. One, you have the noise of the ratchet. Two, you have the noise of the compressor running. So for at home, electric's the way to go. But if you're at the shop, you can get a cheap Chicago pneumatic or whatever it's called from Harbor Freight air ratchet. It's like 20 bucks. You can get a swivel on it so that you have a little more articulation and you're in for maybe $40 versus almost $200 for the electric one. In fact, that's exactly what I did. So this was my old air ratchet that I used at the shop. This is the swivel piece I was talking about. So the air hose goes here and it allows you to really get some good articulation. Here's a grinder that I bought 20 bucks. Actually, it's the same one in the box. Weirdly enough, I've had this forever, but this is the, this is the key right here to really get good movement the kind of movement you don't get when there's just a hose attached to it. If you're doing air tools and you want a little bit better floppity, get one of these guys. Another tool that came from you guys is this tool right here. This is a brake caliper tool, the rear brake caliper tool. Is this the best quality one ever in the history of these things? Absolutely not. This is pretty affordable. A ton of different fittings for the rear calipers that you have to rotate back in. Super, it came with gloves too, I don't, Whatever. These actually I think are good. The caliper hanger hangers. I might need to get myself a set of those because I don't have one. Now for a lot of this stuff, I didn't spend the highest dollar amount that I possibly could. I spent as much as I felt was appropriate. If someone gets this box and they're like, wow, these things are not great, right? The brake tool I have, I've used three or four times and it's not great. Perfect time to upgrade. Do what I did. I bought cheap tools when I first started. Tried to get stuff with a lifetime warranty. When I was ready to upgrade, I'd upgrade and then took them home. Now, something else that you guys recommended was a multimeter. I don't think most technicians need to spend five or $600 on a multimeter. I think a reasonable price multimeter, this was 40 bucks, is gonna do most everything you're gonna do in the automotive space because this is not the best tool for a lot of what we do. We need one, I think. Uh, this one's cool, it came with a temp probe. I think you need one of these for quick checks, but I think when you're real, really in the diagnostic heat, the multimeter is probably not the best tool for the job. So a, a reasonably priced multimeter, Klein makes great stuff. Obviously Klein didn't probably make this. It's just Klein branded. It didn't fit in that drawer. We'll have to find another home for it. What about the next drawer down? Oh, that's deeper. I still use my multimeter from tech school. 20 years later, I went through leads. Spending money on good leads is a good idea, but I don't think you need to spend a whole lot of money on the multimeter. Something else we'll feed into the electric drawer is this flashlight. I'm also not gonna open this because I don't want it to get lost or I don't wanna end up grabbing it and using it until the whoever gets this box gets this box. There are so many of you that absolutely love this light. It's super bright, three settings ton of articulation. So a good inspection light is vital, whether it's that one, whether it's a pen light like the Stylus Pro, I'll link that one up too, because I'm a huge fan of that light. I also want to point out that moments ago, this table was completely filled with tools and we only have tools, I think in four drawers. One, two, three, four, five, maybe six, five drawers. So this box is going to have a lot of room to expand in the future. We still got a pretty good amount of tools left. I grabbed a half inch torque wrench and a three eighths torque wrench. And the half inch is pretty much, you should be torquing wheels down as best you can, youngster. The three eighths is because a lot of the stuff you're gonna be doing, you need much less torque than a big half inch torque wrench is gonna provide for you. And 
you know, when you get some experience, you feel what 10 newton meters feels like. You have a calibrated torque arm. Click, click, buzz, buzz, whatever. Until you get that, you should be torquing everything down at least, at least early on. I'll tell you guys what, this Pittsburgh breaker bar, I have a similar one. This one's a little loose. I'd probably tighten it up a little bit. I still have this one. I bought it before I started at the dealership. We also have pry bars. I almost bought pry bars at Harbor Freight but I actually think these are a better quality pry bar and they have a strike cap on them. I'm also not gonna open these because this makes a decent storage tray, the package that they come in. Also, I, this is one area where I actually think the box is inferior to the roll cart. There's not a good place to store things that would store much better vertical like pry bars and like screwdrivers and things like that. Coming from a recommendation from you guys, wobble extensions. The way these work is kind of cool. You'll see there's kind of like a rounded end on the top here. You have to be careful with these because they can get you in a bad way if you're not paying attention. So if you put a socket on it, it gives you a little bit of wobble. You go to tighten a bolt, the normal extension's here, but you need to be here. Gives you just a little bit of wobble. I actually don't recommend these for like your normal extensions. These are specialty in my opinion because they can get you, get you woggly. So use, use these with caution. There are extensions in our socket set that I bought. So I think that is going to be okay. Got a set of Allens, got a set of Torx. I don't know if whoever's gonna be using this stuff is going to need those things, but a lot of cars use that stuff. This is the place where it's wild how much money you can spend in that socket and really tool in general organization. I got these because they were cheap. It was like $35 or something like that for the entire set metric and standard. This is not my favorite way to store sockets, but you can store them standing up, which is my favorite way. There is a magnetic set from VIM that I really like, completely slidable and everything. Westling Machine makes my favorite ones. They look like these here, but I'll tell you, they're expensive. I think they're worth all the money. You don't have $200 to outfit your whole box with socket rails when you're first starting out. You need the sockets more so than the rails. You're gonna want the rails eventually, but that doesn't need to be a super early thing. Going along with our impact, you gotta have the sockets to go with it. This actually has 3 8 and half inch drive. It's got 37 pieces. Now, this next thing I only bought because it was on sale for two bucks, and that is a bottle opener so you can open up your root beer. One more specialty socket that I thought probably does actually make sense is an O2 sensor socket. Uh, also, side note, Tecton, this brand, a lot of you guys in that last video recommended this brand. The kits are more than what I spent for hand tools, but they do have a lifetime warranty and a ton of you guys recommended. So when you're searching for your hand tools, that may be a brand you wanna check out. Moving on, and these next two things came from you guys, a brake pad indicator. So you slip this in the brake pad to check how much pad you have left, which is a great idea. A tread depth gauge, always a great idea to see how much tire tread you have left. And the kit actually came with a digital one too, which is kind of neat. I actually liked this kit so much, these three things all came together, I bought one for myself. You gotta have a magnet, actually you gotta have more than one magnet in general. There are also three more things that I ordered that haven't come yet. One is this oil change socket kit, another one is a standard traditional oil change wrench, and an inspection mirror. Next up is an underhood light. Now, this is a place where you could probably forego, especially early on. This one was like $95 and it has some lights on it that have multiple brightnesses. What I like about this kind of thing is not only can you put it under the hood, but you can put it inside the car. If you've watched other of my videos, you've seen me do both of those things. But I have a hack for you. If you'll notice, this is a light that normally would have a battery on it that doesn't have a battery on it. It has a cord. So what I do is I use an underhood light similar to how I just showed. And so that I don't have to worry about recharging it or recharging batteries or any of that stuff. I buy this really cheap light. It's like 15 bucks from Home Depot Motorsports. And then I zip tie it on. Then I have light forever. This has probably been on for two months straight without being moved or turned off and don't come at me because I'm still working on this TT. Somehow we still got a lot of stuff left to go. Now we have the socket set that has a whole bunch of things, 290 piece socket set. We'll talk about this one in a minute. This one, however, came directly from you guys and you're like, hey, rookie, rookie mechanic needs a scan tool. And that roll cart I didn't agree with you because that was going to be a dealer VW technician getting that cart. Now, actually, that program, funny enough, that program expanded to Honda and they've done not nine, nine carts, five of them accounted for. So with that video, we all helped nine young technicians get their start. You guys should be super proud of yourself. I'm so excited. Hopefully this that keeps expanding more in the company and all that. This 
is a $500 universal dual communication scan tool from Top Don. Super dope. It did pull long coding on my Mark 8, which is kind of wild that it can do that. You can also email reports to customers or to the shop or whatever. Ton of capability for 500 bucks. I'm gonna be trying it on a couple other cars that I have before whoever gets this box gets this box because I wanna learn about it. I actually saw these guys at SEMA Apex. It's not wireless and it comes with some other adapters, but I actually prefer it not being wireless. That's one less failure point for your scan tool, which does happen. I got something that's my favorite part. This is not included in the $2,500 budget. This didn't come solicited, this came on the back of a very good friend of mine named Paul Danner. You guys probably know him as Scanner Danner. Pretty cool what Charles is doing, offering you guys some help getting started in this field. I wanted to be part of it, but this is about Charles, not me. So I'm gonna give my book, I'm gonna give a one year subscription to Scanner Danner Premium, and then also a $200 SD grant to shop at AES Wave, and they match dollar for dollar with me, so it will end up being $400 once that grant is applied. Charles, thank you so much for what you do in this industry, and I'm just happy to be partnered with you in it. So, Paul, amazing stuff. I can't thank you enough for that contribution. It means the world, and whoever gets this box, man, oh, man, what, a, what an additional gift. I'm not including that in the budget, but how, you can't tell Paul Danner no when he offers to throw throw that kind of thing out to uh, to a future technician or a very young technician in their career. So, Paul, thank you. If y'all don't follow Paul, after this video, go over to his channel, follow him, subscribe, whatever, and tell him that you saw this video and that he's an awesome dude. And I think that will make his day. Next, for our hand tools, uh, everything is actually encased in this nice case, which I might just leave in case. Reason being, I'm gonna have to transport this box somewhere most likely, and then it'll just have to all get redone. But, ugh. This is, this was the piece that was probably the hardest to decide out of everything was what do I do about the hand tools? The other one that I was gonna get was a Quinn set from Harbor Freight, but they weren't on sale when I went to buy them. This has half inch, three eighths, quarter inch drive, metric and standard. It was 180. It's got a couple of wrenches in it too, some extensions up at the top, some specialty bits with a bit driver right here. It is nice that it's all encased in a case. You got sockets and something I wish, I wish tool companies would stop doing. This this is kind of neat. These actually would probably come in handy, these super thin wrenches. Tool companies, if you watch this, and maybe you guys will agree, post in the comments, let me know if you agree. Quit doing this. Put the right number of tools that the thing has on the thing, and don't give us 87 Allen wrenches. We don't need them. We don't use them. Or maybe you do, and if you do, I'm sorry, but that drives me insane. 290 pieces of it, 90 of them is damn Allen wrenches. Moving on. So we got deep, we got shallow, we got some spark plug socket. This one is not gonna be everything a technician's ever gonna need, but it doesn't skip 16, it doesn't skip 17, it's got numerated in order, so it might miss some fraction ones, but I don't know how to do fractions, so I'm gonna leave it in this case. Whoever gets the box is gonna have the socket organizers to organize this. This also does have 12 point. Husky ratchets are also pretty solid, and they do have a lifetime warranty. And you could just go to Home Depot and get them warrantied. And look at, this is a good size little quarter inch. So I said I was gonna tell you exactly what was gonna happen with this box, and it's time to do that. Last year when I built that box, I knew it was going to the dealer, a new technician was gonna get it, and the dealership bought all those tools. This year I didn't have that. They're still building carts, but I didn't wanna just do the same video I did last year for you guys. So here's what I'm gonna do. It's pretty clear that I don't need these tools and I don't need this box. I have plenty of that as you see behind me. And I've spent the last 20 years perfecting my own personal tool collection, which is part of the fun of working on cars, but also a lot of your budget for working on cars as well. I'm going to give this box away. There's a group called Tech Force Foundation. And last year I gave them $5,000 worth of scholarship to give to two young upcoming technicians. Instead of giving cash this year, I'm gonna donate this box and these tools through Tech Force Foundation. I'll link Tech Force down below so you can check them out. So who's gonna get this box? I don't know. Where are they gonna be at in their career? I don't know. But with any luck, I will be able to personally deliver this box to that person. And what I'm hoping for is that we can make this not just an annual thing, but a couple of times a year thing. I bought all of these tools that you see before me, minus two things. One. Our man Scanner Dan are committing to what he committed to, which is just, I'm insanely thankful for. And the other one is the scan tool. Top Don has reached out to me many times asking me to review their scan tools and I've never agreed to it. However, they were kind enough to contribute that scan tool 
and that does something for me too. That allows me to check it out and see if it's worth something you guys considering. So far, I'm pretty impressed actually. I'm excited to contribute back and give back to a, an automotive industry that's been pretty good to me. Now, for those of you in the industry, I think we can all agree and say there's a lot about the automotive industry that is straight trash. Trash employers, trash things manufacturers do, bad customers. It's been good to me. If we ever want it to be better, giving a kid a toolbox ain't gonna get it done, but it's one piece of a really big puzzle. Now, I also put together a document with links and prices to everything that I showed you today, so that document will be linked up. One final thing, what did I miss? I know I missed something, so drop that down in the comments. Let's use the comments section for good and continue to build out a huge resource for people to go and look at and define what tools they need, what they can add to their collection. Maybe I bought something here that you think is dumb. Be nice, but let me know too. What would you have done differently? Maybe on the next one, I'll grab one of you guys and you can come shopping with me and we can build a box together. With that, I'm out. This way, out. Have an awesome day and I'll talk to you again next time.